Pirosh Shah Gotrich, then Executive Chairman at Godrich Properties. Talk about their numbers. Pirosh Shah, hi, morning. Your numbers have been a strong one in a, on a seasonal basis with highest ever booking seen. Are you enthused with the performance, both for the quarter as well as the financial year, given the severe challenges that the sector saw, uh, given the NBFC lending crunch and various uncertainties around the entire space? Yeah, it's great to be with you. I think we're extremely satisfied with the performance uh, in FY19 and especially in the fourth quarter of FY19 where we delivered our best ever quarter from a business development perspective with sales of over 2,100 crore. And I think those sales were very well distributed amongst our top geographies of NCR, Bangalore, Pune and Mumbai um, and also between existing inventory and new launches. So I think extremely satisfied. Um, with the overall financial year where our area sold grew by 40 percent um, and certainly with the fourth quarter of the financial year which, which on most parameters was our best ever quarter. Okay, so tell me are you looking to acquire stressed assets uh, or looking at further joint ventures because there are newspaper reports suggesting that you are open to acquiring Edibles real estate assets. Can you confirm or deny the same? No, not really. You know, we typically don't like to comment on market speculation. We're at any time looking to add uh, projects, um, you know, in all parts of the country. But for now, our focus is on adding uh, to our business development portfolio at the project level as opposed to at the entity level. Pirosha, how does the India Bulls uh, real estate portfolio fit into the Godrej property scheme of things if you were, in fact, to go ahead uh, assuming, you know, due diligence uh, has been done? Again, you know, it, it's not possible to comment on, on market speculation, but certainly at any given time we are looking at a lot of new opportunities from many different developers. But I think until those projects reach a scale, where, reach a stage rather where they are ready um, and any kind of, you know, definitive documents have been agreed to, it, it doesn't make sense to, to comment on those. Okay. Now, the sector also did continue to see a prolonged liquidity challenge. How are project additions are shaping up uh, in terms of location and turnaround times? Yeah, I think, you know, on the, on the portfolio addition side, the opportunity has probably never been as strong as it is at the moment. Uh, we've had a number of um, new project additions during the fourth quarter, including a large portfolio of projects in the Pune market, where we partnered with another developer uh, for six new projects with a total saleable area of about 25 million square feet, which makes it the largest uh, business development deal that the company has done. So we're quite excited about that opportunity and certainly think it sets, sets us up very well in the Pune market. We've also recently partnered for an exciting project um, in an excellent location here in, here in Mumbai, in, in Bandra, and we're quite excited again to get that project launched later this financial year. Um, I think the visibility for the current financial year remains extremely strong. As you mentioned, the NBFC liquidity environment is putting a lot of pressure on other developers to find ways to monetize their projects. And I think one of the routes to achieve that is certainly by partnering with developers like us. So we hope to deliver another outstanding year from a business development perspective. Rosha, morning. Now you've achieved revenue recognition at the trees phase one within 32 months. That's a year ahead of schedule. And this was not really factored in by most players. So are you enthused by the buying activity that we're seeing there despite the overall weak trends? Yeah, you know, this was a project we actually launched a few years ago, and I think we're very happy to have achieved uh, completion of the project well ahead of the timelines we'd committed to our customers. This, of course, benefits them in being able to move into their homes uh, more quickly. It benefits the company in, in hastening the period over which uh, we receive our cash flows and, and can account for the revenue generated. So I think, you know, we're extremely happy with uh, the kind of performance in the trees, both from a sales perspective as well as a actual construction and delivery perspective. Um, and certainly we think it sets the tone well uh, for our developments here in Vikroli, which we, which we remain very excited about, and is also an indication of the focus the company is putting on execution and construction and in, in ensuring that our construction timelines continue to be brought down. And finally, how has the latest revenue recognition norms affected your family and the financials? And how should one really look into the numbers? Um, is the guidance for FY20 in all three parameters, do you continue to maintain the guidance? 
You know, we prefer to avoid giving any specific financial guidance. It's obviously a sector where a lot of unknowns uh, tend to determine performance to a significant extent, including things like regulatory approvals for new project launches, timelines for occupation certificates, which, uh, you know, uh, impact uh, revenue recognition. So we try to avoid giving any specific guidance. But certainly, I think the combination of the strong momentum we've seen in, in sales in the second half of the financial year, combined with the strong project additions we've witnessed over the last quarter, should allow us to build on the momentum we've seen in FY19 and hopefully have another outstanding year in FY20. All right, we wish you all the very best. Many thanks for joining in on ET Now with that perspective on your earnings.